As we inch step by step closer to the Cruiserweight Classic Finals, tonight we finish off the quarterfinal round live from Manhattan, New York. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament has been something to witness. And as you saw last week, Nathan Frazier and Ilya Dragunov punching their ticket to the semifinals next week here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. But who is going to advance right here this afternoon? Coming up in just a little bit, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, representing Monday Night Raw, takes on the human highlight reel from Friday Night SmackDown, that being Ricochet. Those two men have met before. They meet again later this afternoon. And kicking us off in moments, Dominic Mysterio and Johnny Gargano one-on-one, -on -one, unsuccessful alongside Dominic's father, Ray, in the six-man tag last Saturday at No Mercy against Imperium. Tonight, they go one-on-one -on -one with a spot in the semifinals on the line. Let's kick things off live from the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Thank you for joining us yet again this afternoon for week six of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Let's send things down to the ring. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from San Diego, California, weighing in at 200 pounds. Well, Dominic Mysterio may have had the most emotional road to the semi, or excuse me, to the quarterfinals, as just in the first round he defeated his father Ray, and was an absolutely incredible matchup between Dominic and Ray, and Dominic certainly earning the respect of some of his naysayers on that night. But as we mentioned just last Saturday night at No Mercy, Dominic teamed up with Ray and his opponent here this evening, Johnny Gargano, in a losing effort against the common enemy in Gunther, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium. Dominic Mysterio taking the pinfall by way of the ring general. So now Dominic turns his attention to a man he stood side by side with seven nights ago in the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano, but only one man can move on to the semifinals and take on Nathan Frazier next Saturday afternoon. Dominic Mysterio live and in living color, but here comes Johnny wrestling and his opponent from Cleveland Ohio weighing in at 199 pounds Johnny Gargano well Johnny Gargano defeating Akira Tozawa in the first round in the matchup that kicked off the Cruiserweight Classic and Gargano looking to keep things going here tonight in the midst of this tournament but two losses pinned together between Gargano's first round match and tonight. One of them being the match we discussed last week at No Mercy, and then a number of weeks ago on SmackDown, Johnny Gargano met Guther one-on-one, -on -one, and it was a victory for the ring general. So Gargano having luck in the means of the CWC, but not necessarily outside of it. So let's see who's gonna be the better man tonight. Both coming in with a pretty even amount of momentum due to the events of No Mercy. Who is gonna punch their ticket to the semifinals next Saturday afternoon? Again, the winner of this match will meet Nathan Frazier, who defeated Angel Garza last week up. But here we go, Dominic and Johnny Gargano kicking things off here in Manhattan, New York. Still to come tonight, the big strong boy from Monday Night Raw, Tyler Bate takes on the one and only from SmackDown, Ricochet, as Dominic goes for the roll up there. Obviously looking for the quick cover over Johnny Gargano, but I think Dominic knows he's in the ring with a veteran. And it's gonna take a lot more to keep Gargano down. Interestingly enough, though, that is, that is how Gargano got the three count in his first round match against Akira Tozawa. was one of those quick three count victories. Dominic trying to keep things going, trying to get the momentum in the early going in this matchup. So far, so good for the young man who put down his father in the first round. Of course, the winner of later tonight's matchup between Tyler Bate and Ricochet will meet Ilya Dragunov next week as well. And then two weeks from now, Two weeks from now, Saturday afternoon, we will see the Cruiserweight Classic finale featuring the finals of the tournament and several more contests still to be assigned. It's gonna be a big week, two weeks from this, two weeks from today, excuse me. So hyped up for the Cruiserweight Classic. Can you get the words out? Dominic grounded and pounded on Johnny Gargano in the corner. Dominic looking hot so far. Gargano doesn't really have an answer for Johnny at the moment, or excuse me, for Dominic at the moment. Go for the cover there, and again, Gargano gets the shoulder up. Dominic, you gotta know he's not gonna get the quick 
victory. Sometimes we pin those quick pinfalls as one superstar trying to get into the psyche of the other, possibly throw them off their game, almost allow them to expend too much energy in the early going by kicking out. Sometimes it's really a case of the superstar not wanting to go the distance with their opposer, so trying to get the matchup done in the first few moments. Hard to call what Dominic's motive is, but nonetheless, Gargano just trying to get back into this matchup. Johnny Gargano, a veteran in this matchup, has wrestled all around the world, held championships around the world, even here in the WWE. Former NXT Grand Slam champion earlier this year was one half of the WWE World Tag Team Champions, but ever since moving to SmackDown in March, was really struggling to kind of get his feet under him on the blue brand. But throughout the summer, Gargano finally starting to pick up some victories, and this CWC could be what takes Gargano to the next level on Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, this tournament not only is just putting your name in the annals of history as the second ever winner of the Cruiserweight Classic on the line, but of course, the winner of this tournament will earn a future Cruiserweight Championship opportunity against whomever is the champion at that time, currently held by Santos Escobar, who retained the gold over Chad Gable last Saturday in Baltimore at No Mercy. Dominic trying to get back into this off the hip toss. Gargano goes underneath. And now Dominic with a big time lariat. Dominic's got to feel a little bit of extra pressure tonight. On the same accord, if Dominic can go one-on-one -on -one with Ray, his own father, and beat him inside the squared circle, well, I got to believe Dominic's absolutely afraid of nothing in this tournament. And I don't know if there's any opponent who's going to be able to match the heart of young Dominic Mysterio in the means of the Cruiserweight Classic as Gargano takes a spill from the top rope. And Dominic has got his eye on the whole shebang who's just trying to get his wits about him at ringside. There goes Dominic with a little springboard. Big time maneuver by Mysterio. This Cruiserweight Classic Tournament very well could be the coming out party in a singles capacity for Dominic Mysterio. We have seen him held tag team championship gold in the past with his father. But Dominic looking to etch his own history here tonight and continuing on next week and the week after. Gargano moving out of the way. Big time crash and burn by Dominic. And he'll call it high risk, high reward for no reason. Sometimes it does not work out the way you want. And Gargano making Dominic Mysterio find that out firsthand off that misstep. Dominic on the apron here. Look at that, getting the best of Gargano. Oh, man, big time neck breaker. Hanging up Johnny Gargano in the top rope. That is not going to go well in the deep waters of this match. Is Dominic now. Back inside the squared circle. Snap mare, Gargano, dead center of the ring, and a beautiful drop kick. Dominic Mysterio has controlled the majority of this matchup so far. Gargano starting to get his... His feet about him. Wait a minute, gonna do it again. No, Dominic Mysterio with the counter. Gargano was starting to get the rug underneath of his feet. A few moments ago, Dominic countered out, but now Johnny Gargano heading back down the right path again. Again, Gargano defeating Akira Tozawa in the first round. The same afternoon that Dominic defeated Ray, and now their roads have led them to right here, right now in Manhattan, New York. Off the knee, and Dominic gets the shoulder up. Johnny Gargano now. Big time shoulder blocked by the whole shebang. Gargano's got so many ways to beat you inside of that ring. He can beat you off that slingshot. He can, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dominic Mysterio backslide. Look to steal the victory, no. Gargano not gonna have any of those games tonight. As we mentioned, Gargano, several submission holds in the arsenal. As we're about to see right here, stretching out Dominic Mysterio. Just one of the many ways Gargano likes to get victory. Dominic is all kinds of torqued inside the middle of the ring. No way he's reaching the ropes right now. But Johnny Gargano all wrapped up on his backside, but there's Dominic Mysterio using the closed fist. Referee allowing a little bit of leeway in a city that knows extreme very well. Dominic put in the corner by Gargano. Gargano fighting out of it. Wait a minute, drop toe hold. We know what comes next. Gargano escape on Dominic Mysterio, going for the submission hold. And Dominic a little bit too far from the ropes to reach out and break the hold. He's gonna have to find a way to get out of the grasp of Johnny Gargano. The submission has given Gargano so much success over the years. It's won him championships in the past. Is it gonna punch his ticket to the semis? 
Oh, not just yet. Dominic once again finding a way. Throwing knees, throwing hands if he's got to. But Gargano not going to allow Dominic any window of opportunity to get back in this match. And even though Widemick cover here. And Dominic gets the shoulder up again. As we were going to mention, even though Gargano escaped, may not have tapped out Dominic. It certainly did him some damage. And Johnny Gargano springboard. Big time Tornado DDT on Mysterio. And Johnny Gargano has completely turned this match around. And he has rallied Manhattan, New York behind him. Gargano has had plenty of battles in this city. He's won the NXT Championship not too far away in Brooklyn, New York. Now Dominic rolling to the outside, trying to create some distance, but Johnny Gargano looking to close that gap. Johnny Gargano not trying to allow Dominic to catch a breather and rest and recuperate. Johnny looking to keep the foot on the gas pedal here, and face first on the outside of the ring goes Mysterio. Gargano may have this match where he wants it. If this continues, Gargano's gonna have a first class ticket booked to the semifinals next Saturday afternoon. And again, here's Gargano really starting to kick things into a different gear with those closed fists. Whoa, but Dominic Mysterio gets out of the way. Missed elbow drop, wait a minute. Dominic Mysterio sending Gargano into the ropes and here comes Mysterio with the 619. Big time offense as Dominic scales the ropes. Could be looking for the frog splash that gained him success in the first round, but Johnny Gargano had it scouted. Gargano read Dominic Mysterio's playbook easily, and it leads to Dominic crashing and burning on the canvas, and Johnny Gargano, even off the 619, is the one standing. That is the veteran status of Gargano coming into play in this match. And Gargano almost had him there. Dominic Mundell knocked himself loopy off that frog splash with no landing that he was hoping for. Gargano misses for the Instagram. Dominic Mysterio pulls him in. Nice hurt come on to take him down. Dominic's got to take advantage though. He's heading to the top. Could be looking for another dive, maybe a frog splash. And Gargano's getting to his feet. Here comes Dom. Big time drop kick. Right on the button of Johnny Gargano. Nailed it flush, and now look at Mysterio. Tilt to whirl off the middle buckle. And Dominic elects for the cover. This could do it. Not just yet as Johnny Gargano continues to persevere. Now Gargano rolling to the outside. A change of roles here as Dominic heads to the sky again with a Topekian hero over the top rope. Johnny Gargano's head might have bounced off the floor of Hammerstein Ballroom. Knocks himself loopy. He's certainly not going to find himself the one securing the three count, except being on the other end of said three. Dominic's got to keep his foot on the gas pedal, which is what he's doing right now, realizing Gargano is starting to get to his feet. And clearly, Johnny Wrestling still got a little more left in the tank as Dominic shoots him off, and with a big time Larry, it takes him off his feet once more. Dominic's got to go for the kill, whether that be another 619 or possibly roll the dice with another frog splash. Gargano, he got out of the way once, but that doesn't mean Dominic doesn't have a window to open it. There's another reversal by Gargano, really starting to see the pendulum of momentum switch back and forth the last few minutes. Nobody really controlling the matchup for too long. Oh, wait a minute, Gargano, you see how fast he got Dominic in a predicament and the slingshot right into the buckle. And Gargano goes for the cover. Will it be a three? Dominic gets the shoulder up and the matchup perseveres. Close call there by Mysterio. But Gargano's got his eyes locked tight. Drop toe hold. Could be going for another Gargano escape. He's got it locked in on Dominic Mysterio. And with no choice, Mysterio taps out. Fatigue was starting to creep in. And Johnny Gargano wreaks the rewards of it. That Gargano escape earlier definitely did some damage on Dominic. 
The mood of the matchup just changed after that, and especially after this missed frog splash, Johnny Gargano found himself nearing victory, a slingshot, a second Gargano escape locked in, and enough to get the tap out and punch Johnny Gargano's ticket to fight Nathan Frazier next Saturday afternoon in the semifinals of the CWC. Here is your winner, Johnny Gargano. Well, there you see the bracket, and there you see Dominic Mysterio's name fade to black. Our first semifinal matchup confirmed as Johnny Gargano meets Nathan Frazier seven afternoons from today in the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Still to come, it is Tyler Bate and Ricochet. Who's going to fight Ilya Dragunov next week? We will find out in moments from Manhattan, New York in the sold-out Hammerstein Ballroom. What a way to kick things off with Johnny Gargano securing a victory. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, we are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. Well, coming up this Monday night, it is the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. First Raw of the fall season, and it is live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time right here on the Donation Gaming YouTube channel. Already signed for this season premiere edition of Raw, a fatal four-way matchup to determine the number one contender to LA Knight's Intercontinental Gold. It is Apollo Crews, Tyler Bate, who will see in action in moments, Kofi Kingston, and Shinsuke Nakamura, who's going to fight LA Knight for the Intercontinental Championship. And in a matchup that is going to be a very interesting affair, Seth Rollins is lining up the gauntlet for Sheamus to try to battle through. And if Sheamus does, he will earn himself another opportunity at Seth Rollins WWE Championship. Who are his opponents? Well, we'll find out when you do this coming Monday night on the season premiere of Raw. That is the only live, pre live premiere coming your way next week, next Friday night. It is the season premiere of Friday Night SmackDown, also coming your way at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And it is going to be a stacked night on the blue brand as we determine the number one contenders for the WWE World Tag Team titles. Cruz del, Cor Cruz del Toro, Joaquin Wilde of Legado del Fantasma take on Kaiser and Vinci of Imperium, who will fight the Brawling Brutes for the gold. Shotzi defeated Bianca Belair last Saturday at no mercy, but the issues are far from settled, and the ante has been upped. It is Belair and Shotzi, no disqualification match next week. And the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes issuing an open challenge to the SmackDown locker room. The United States Championship will be on the line on the season premiere edition of Friday Night SmackDown. Who will stand across the ring from Cody Rhodes? We find out next week. But it is time to determine the final spot in the semifinals of the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next week will be Johnny Gargano versus Nathan Frazier, as well as Ilya Dragunov versus the winner of this battle between Tyler Bate and Ricochet. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! Well, Ricochet has finally had about a week to cool down since his last in-ring competition. It was a busy month between SummerSlam and No Mercy for the one and only Ricochet. The last Saturday night defeating Omos at No Mercy has had that one week to heal up, to rest and recuperate and try to set his mind on tonight's battle, but it's not gonna be an easy task ahead of him against Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate. And with Tyler Bate 
participating in that fatal four-way match this coming Monday on Raw. You gotta wonder if that's gonna play into the strategy of the big strong boy, possibly looking to get the match done early to try to save some energy for the season premiere of Raw this coming Monday night. All remains to be seen, but Tyler Bate ready to walk down the aisle. And his opponent from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, Tyler Bate. Well, Tyler Bate defeating Drew Gulak in the first round, Ricochet defeating Humberto Carrillo in the first round. Now they meet here tonight. And the last time these two men met one-on-one -on -one was on December the 9th of last year. Ricochet issued an open challenge for the Cruiserweight Championship. Who was accepted? Tyler Bate, who was a part of the NXT roster at the time and made his way to Friday Night SmackDown because of the open challenge. Ricochet picked up the victory on that night, retaining the Cruiserweight title. Of course, since Tyler Bate has been a welcome participant to the Monday Night Raw locker room. But tonight, their pass cross again in the semifinals of the CWC. Gotta wonder if that previous match all those months ago is weighing on the mind of either of these men, especially the man who was the loser on that occasion, that being Tyler Bate. Nonetheless, this is gonna be a physical matchup all the way through both sides of the ring. And it is the final, quarterfinal match in the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Ricochet, Tyler Bate, the bell has sounded and we are underway. Winner fights Ilya Dragunov next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. As Tyler Bate going, oh man! Going for the kill early off the Brain Buster into the pinfall. Well, maybe what we said about Tyler Bate possibly wanting to get this match done in a little bit of a sooner fashion than normal remains a little bit true. Oh, wait a minute, Tyler Bate sending Ricochet up and over to the outside. Bate hitting the ropes. Look at the offense by Tyler Bate! My goodness! And Manhattan, New York already coming unglued for the big strong boy and the human highlight reel. Tyler Bate going for the kill early. Up and over the top rope. And crashing and burning on the outside. Taking Ricochet down with him. Oh man! Ricochet trying to fight out between a rock and a hard place at the moment. Ricochet springboard. Oh! Lands on his feet. Like a cat out there. Ricochet's lucky that he saw Tyler Bate got out of the way, out of his periphery. Oh, Tyler Bate crashes and burns this time. This is a car wreck, and the matchup just got underway. Man, these guys ain't waiting around for any feeling out process. No wasting motion in this matchup that's been going for about a minute and change so far. These guys are going 100 miles per hour, and the bell just rang. Back inside the squared circle, and Tyler Bate looking to keep the momentum. Well, at least for a moment, we were back inside the squared circle. Bate taking Ricochet to the outside. And wait a minute, look at this, stretching out the one and only. Knows he can't get the victory on the outskirts, but no matter where he's at, can definitely do some damage to Ricochet off that maneuver. But Ricochet can as well in the reverse. Oh, man, and a big time forearm. And follows it up with a shooting star at ringside. Man, who told these two superstars to go 100 miles an hour after the opening bell? There is no waste in motion tonight. Motivated as all hell to come out and absolutely conquer their opponent. With Elliot dragging off, waiting in the winds. Ricochet going for the pinfall, not just yet. Man, imagine how hard fought of a week it could be for Tyler Bay if he defeats Ricochet here tonight. And then goes into the fatal four-way at the season premiere of Raw. And then regardless of the result, could have Ilya drag it off next Saturday afternoon. A ricochet trying to make sure that the load is going to be a little bit lighter for Tyler Bate to carry over the next week. Trying to find his name in the lights of the semifinals next Saturday afternoon. Look at that using the ropes as a tag team partner there. Off the tornado. Tyler Bate survives in the early going. I want to thank you for joining us this Saturday afternoon, week six of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next Saturday, we'll be live at 3 p.m. Eastern time for the semifinals of the CWC. And then two weeks from now, we'll be live for the Cruiserweight Classic finale, which of course will feature the finals of the tournament and multiple other matches still to be signed. Tyler Bate off the misstep. 
You see that happens already a lot so far in this matchup. Both men going for high risk maneuvers to no avail. And it's only going to be worse as the matchup progresses. But Tyler Bate taking ricochet for a ride right now. Tilt to whirl. Around and around the big strong boy goes. Ricochet is going to be dazed. He's going to be confused. But so is the man who hit the damn maneuver in Tyler Bate. That's one way to ring the bell of the opponent. Scramble the eggs a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. Go for that reverse Boston. Tyler Bay has won matches in the past with this very maneuver. Remember, this is how he tapped out Sami Zayn back in June in the King of the Ring tournament. Tyler Bay could be looking for victory. Ricochet's close to the ropes, but if he's in so much pain, he's not gonna be able to reach out, but elects to grab the boots out from underneath Tyler Bay. Smart counter there by the one and only. The bait not gonna allow Ricochet to take the momentum. Off to Saido and Ricochet going to the outside, trying to create some distance. Tyler Bate now in pursuit of the one and only. Now ringside again, where we have spent about half of this matchup already. Tyler Bate is fired up, motivated as all hell. Is the superstar one of two that are representing Monday Night Raw in this tournament. Of course, Ilya Dragunov being the other. Tyler Bate looking for the victory tonight. Imagine if Tyler Bate can defeat Ricochet tonight and then possibly walk in to the Fatal 4-Way this Monday live at the season premiere of Raw and become the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, what a week that could already be for Tyler Bate. And then possibly fighting Ilya Dragunov next Saturday could be a huge week for the big strong boy, but not if Ricochet has anything to say about it. Send the bait into the ropes. Let's reversal there. Kick right to the rib cage. Double underhook power bomb sits out with it. Into the cover. That's gonna do it here. No close call as Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Big move by Tyler Bate there. They'll call him the big strong boy for no reason. He can fly around this ring. He can strike. He's also got the power game. Tyler Bate a full arsenal from bell to bell. That's one of the reasons he's a former NXT Tag Team Champion. One of the reasons he was the first ever NXT United Kingdom Champion. And of course, one of the reasons why he was able to get through Drew Gulak in the first round of this tournament. Tyler Bate goes for the shot. Ricochet with the counter. Ricochet's got to start getting back into this thing. Takes out the knees. Look at this. German into the bridge. Too close to the ropes there for a pinfall, but at least the maneuver was landed with certainty. Now it's Ricochet who finds Tyler Bate, trying to create some distance. That's the one and only who's looking to keep on the pressure. Ricochet was able to outlast the Nigerian giant Omas last Saturday at no mercy, but at what cost? Obviously, Ricochet can't be 100%. That's not gonna slow him down. Look at that maneuver. There's a reason they call him the one and only, and it's because of maneuvers like that. And now looking for the kill. Hits the ropes. This is why they call him the one and only. Moonsault, pinfall, will it be three? No. Big Manhattan, New York thought Ricochet had it. We got Johnny Gargano and Nathan Frazier signed for next Saturday. But who will be Ilya Dragunov's opponent? Will it be Ricochet who's in control right now? Or will Tyler Bate get back into this matchup? On the top right now. I don't know what Ricochet's got in mind. Did you see that by the one and only? Who's got the adrenaline to pull out that kind of maneuver? And now back to the top rope. Ricochet isn't done yet. A picture perfect moonsault from the heavens. And that's going to do it. Ricochet to advance. Not just yet as Tyler Bate has still got blood pumping through the veins. Ricochet has turned into a new gear in this matchup. And Bate rolling to the outside, but the one and only's wheels are spinning. And so is the body of Ricochet as he goes over that top rope, cradles up his own body, and it explodes on Tyler Bate like a time bomb. Tyler Bate's got no idea where he is at ringside, and Ricochet realizes that, elects to keep the pressure on. And what a great contest here. Your final quarterfinal matchup of the CWC. We started with 16 men. We are currently down to five, which will become four when we hear a three. 
And then gotta get back inside the ring. If this thing goes to a double count out, Ilya Dragunov's gonna have a first class ticket to the finals without having to compete in the semis. Back inside the squared circle, Ricochet went for the roaring forearm. Big counter by Tyler Bate with a German suplex off the reversal. The strength of Bate to be able to get out of the way and grasp his hands quick enough off the German, off the shooting star, but Ricochet still fighting. These men have not slowed down since the opening bell. You gotta wonder what it's gonna take to secure a three count on either way of the ring and confirm our final semi semi-final matchup next Saturday. Tyler Bate now looking to just ground and pound on Ricochet. Maybe that's the smart idea. Slow down the pace of the matchup and try to take out some of those high-flying abilities of the one and only. As Bate with the kick. Could be going for another double underhook powerbomb. Into the cover. Oh, and I thought the dose of the powerbomb was going to be enough, but Ricochet keeps on fighting. And Tyler Bates just going back to the well with what works. Realizes Ricochet may be right there. He just needs to inflict just a little bit more punishment. Now Tyler Bates collar and elbow. Gets pulled in with a strong shoulder block. Ricochet up just like that. How, how bad do these two superstars want it? They are fighting through the pain as we are witnessing right now. You gotta wonder what these two men are gonna have left in the tank come next Saturday afternoon, especially if it's Tyler Bate walking out of this matchup with a victory and then going into that fatal four-way on Raw. Ilya Dragunov certainly gonna be the fresher competitor next week in the matchup against either Ricochet or Tyler Bate. Backslide, Ricochet looking to steal the victory. Not just yet. Almost had him there, did he? There's a counter by Ricochet and a tilt to whirl head scissors down goes the big strong boy You notice these superstars going back to the well with some of their best maneuvers And you can't blame them. It's going to what works If it inflicts the damage then certainly doesn't need to be pretty Off the spine buster ricochet that time elects for a springboard a little extra oomph in the moonsault He's got Tyler Bate pursuit to the corner and a cannonball follows it up with it you see as we continue to move on with this matchup and you gotta put two and two together looking at the fatigue, the body language of these two men that we gotta be nearing a victory for one way or another. Ricochet taking things to the air in beautiful style. I don't think anybody flies through the skies as picture perfectly as Ricochet does. Now pulls Tyler Bay in again with the head scissors take down. Ricochet is just trying to let those maneuvers add up. Now just throwing some left, throwing some rights as we said a moment ago. Nothing pretty. Oh man, mean kick to the rib cage. That'll knock the wind out of you. Twice on Saturday. It goes for the victory roll. Or at least a variation of it. It almost had him, but you see the absolute disdain for that decision. Ricochet not able to get the three count just yet. How are these men still pushing forward? Oh, recall me! And that's gonna do it! No! Tyler Bates still has got life left in him. What is it gonna take to secure a three count? These men have been going pedal to the metal since the opening bell. No slowing down for either competitor, yet the matchup progresses. We still don't have, we still don't know, excuse me, who is gonna fight Dragonoff next week. Ricochet's getting desperate, just throwing strikes, throwing anything he can, anything he's got enough energy to muster up. It's now Tyler Bate doing the same. And I'm going for a brain buster! Similar to what we saw earlier in this contest. Now Ricochet rolls to the outside, Tyler Bate, Tope Suicida! And directed right on the head of Ricochet, almost a headbutt intentionally there, off the Suicida. Ricochet's bell rung, that could certainly be paying Tyler Bate dividends, but it looks like Ricochet was able to shake the cobwebs off, at least for now. Back and forth, the pendulum of momentum swings. Your final quarter, final bout. Ricochet heads to the top. Wait a minute, 
Going for the 630 and nobody home. Tyler Bate moving out of the way. Off the misstep. And now Tyler Bate picking the ankles one more time. Going for the reverse Boston. All the way for the UK. If Ricochet taps, we'll have a decision. If Ricochet taps, it's going to be the big strong boy versus the invincible one next week. Oh, but once again, Ricochet went to the well and pulled out the rug from underneath Bate. Kick to the rib cage. Wait a minute. Tying up Tyler Bate into the roll up here. He got him. The three. He got him. Ricochet had to resort to the roll up and stole the victory over Tyler Bate, yet fair and square. Well, you know what? Tyler Bate's got nothing to be ashamed of. Falling short in the CWC tonight. He's got that big opportunity on Raw, and Ricochet's gonna move forward to next Saturday afternoon in the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic after this phenomenal contest against the big strong boy here tonight. Here is your winner, Ricochet! Well, there you see the five that did remain, but we are down to the final four in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time Live, it will be the Invincible Ilya Dragunov versus the one, the only, Ricochet in the semifinals of the CWC. And also come your way seven afternoons from right now, it is going to be Nathan Frazier, the hot prospect from NXT, who has bursted on the scenes in the midst of this tournament, taking on the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano. We are down to the final four participants who will make it to the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic at the finale in two weeks. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. And don't forget, we'll be live Monday night for the season premiere of Raw and live next Friday for the season premiere of SmackDown, 5 p.m. Eastern time on both occasions. And we'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Saw when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm around.